evening and welcome to this, the April 15th edition of Beyond Headlines. My name is Colin Dow and I'll be serving as your host this evening. As I open up, I always say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting us into your homes. Whether you are listening to us on GBN Radio, viewing on GBN Television or any of our social media platforms, we're eternally grateful that you are willing to share part of your Monday evening with us. And we are opening up and we are going to be speaking about everybody's business. We are going to be speaking about tourism this evening. And I have the distinct honor, I have three beautiful ladies with me, two in studio, one online, as we chat tourism. I will ask them to introduce themselves and then we will delve into the tourism product and specifically sustainable tourism and the upcoming conference. Ladies. Good evening, Colin. Lovely to be here. My name is Petra Roach and I'm the CEO of the Grenada Tourism Authority. Welcome, Petra. Thank you. Curl Grand Hoshtiarek. I am the Chief Operations Officer at the Grenada Tourism Authority. Excellent, Curl. And online we do have... Amanda Charles, the Sustainable Tourism Specialist at the Caribbean Tourism Organization. So wonderful to be joining for this evening's discussion. Excellent, Amanda, and thank you. And we're with you, so let's stay with you. Um, it is your portfolio and focal point. So just tell us just a brief overview of um, what the conference entails, how long it has been ongoing. We know that Grenada will be hosted in 2024, but how long has there been in the Caribbean sustainable tourism conversations. Thank you so much. So this will be the 18th edition of the Caribbean Sustainable Tourism Conference. And the Caribbean Tourism Organization is so pleased to be partnering with the government of Grenada through the Grenada Tourism um, Authority to host this year's conference. Incidentally, this will be the first time that we're coming back to an in-person event since COVID-19. The last conference was actually held in St. Vincent and the Grenadines right next door, and uh, it was held in 2019. So in 2024, the conference kicks off on Earth Day, April 22nd, and we are looking at the theme of the five Ps for a legacy of Caribbean tourism, sustainability, people, planet, prosperity, purpose, and partnerships. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, the, uh, Petra, let's start with you in terms of in-studio. The Caribbean Sustainable Tourism Conference seems to be coming of age. It's 18. It's uh, 18. It is 18. And uh, what does it mean for Grenada to be hosting this conference? Well, I think that we are trying to ensure that we don't get consumed in the sun, sand, sea ideology. And I think if you look at what the essence of sustainable tourism is in the Caribbean, I think that Grenada will actually be the North Star. We have wonderful traditions here. We are very beholden to our heritage. And um, when you look at the landscape, when you look at the homage to agriculture, when you look at what we're doing in terms of using niches like health and wellness, like the diving niche, there is a lot of recalibration. And I think that certainly we have been doing so much in terms of community tourism. I always say that Grenada is the place where you can come and you can get up close and personal with each and every Grenadian. And what we want to do through this conference is really have a clarion call for our citizens to understand that this is a very fragile industry. These are very fragile resources. Ultimately, we have to ensure that we preserve preserve and protect in a much more proactive and intentional way. Um, one of the things um, Amanda mentioned was that we are going to be hosting on the opening day, which is Earth Day. And 
and there are quite a few activities that are going on on the island because I think when you even think about things like litter, which is a very simple thing that everyone can sign up and pledge to be better at, that litter goes into the ocean. It's 70 percent of the world is made up of water and ultimately, especially as a small island development, developing state, we know that tourism is dependent on what our marine ecosystem looks like and therefore when you throw the bottles um, out through the car window they end up in the ocean they're eaten by you know the fish and the marine life they're broken down into microplastics which are through photo degradation or through mechanical force and ultimately that is then consumed by us as human beings it impacts the habitat of the um, marine life and we really have to be understanding that there is a clarion call for us to do better for us to understand the challenges that are out there and really um, Grenada wants to sit at the table of this very important discussion and make sure that our voices are heard and not only that but that our best practices are seen as well because there's so many wonderful things that are going on on the island. You know, we have luminaries like Dr. Guido Marcel, like Dr. Velma Chesme, like Telfer Bideau, who have done incredible things, and we really want to elevate and ensure that the world recognizes that, you know, we are playing our part as well. Okay. Um, cool. One of the P's of marketing and not going sustainable tourism is product. So chat with us to educate Grenadians on the sustainable tourism products that we do have that sometimes we probably take for granted. I mean, as I would share with my Caribbean folk, unlike many other Caribbean islands, probably Jamaica excluded, we can offer everything in Grenada. Some islands zoom in on the ecotourism, some do the sun, sea and sand, but Grenada is blessed because we can do both. and. We, our landscape has allowed us the opportunity to do both. But if you can just highlight some of the products that we have that citizens should be conscious of in having that sustainable tourism product. Absolutely. Um, you know, when we talk about sustainable tourism and we talk about product, and when we talk about product in the context of product development, of course, we have to zero in on the people of Grenada. Now, when we look at the people of Grenada, how do we, like you indicated, how we have such a rich, diverse history? Um, how do we make ourselves seen? How do we make ourselves distinguished, distinguished distinctive, um, you know, as a people? And, you know, yeah, we have some fantastic products that are out there currently. You know, we have our Grand Atang Forest Reserve. Um, we have, of course, which everybody has to see the Mona Monkey, right? Mm -hmm. And the significance of the Mona Monkey. But I mean, more so, you know, we have great, fantastic products right in community, like the Belmont Estate. You literally have a real life best practice right there because it not only is in community, but it is involves community. The people are that um, area um, are the ones that make this thing happen. Right. And it's really important that when you dig deep, you really have to go to the goats, you have to go to the cocoa, you got to try the river, um, and then you got to try the food because everything comes back around. Right. So be it as our culinary aspect and what makes us unique, be it as Saraka, be it as what makes us unique from the festivals or the, cu the cultural elements, the Shakespeare Mass in Carriaco, the quadrille dance, whatever those things are, absolutely phenomenal. And this is what makes us who we are as a mm -hmm. people and what makes Grenada so special, you know, um, and yes, the, the orange economy, so we're talking culture here, um, is quite significant with who we really are, right? Mm -hmm. It is the traditional work boat building, um, the Shakespeare mass, the spice mass, with the importance of the culture, and you see that now, how we've transitioned that in terms of product and development. Mm -hmm. You've seen that, um, you know, through the artificial reef that we've um, continued to expand and enhance, we are also now taking that and evolving it into something that means more that gives us a competitive advantage but also speak to who we are intrinsically as a people mm -hmm. so you know be it is from the rivers all the way down to the seas we certainly have something for everybody but at the end of the day when we go out there and we market we really want people to have wonderful memorable experiences and the only way we can do that is to open our homes and our lifestyles to who they are right. and pretty much that's just a little tip of product 
I'm going to get back into product. I'll give my um, underwater sculpture park with the new addition story a little bit later on because I think it almost cost me my life. But that's a, and that's a good thing, people, by the way, because I, it, it really speaks to how thrilled I was um, in seeing these carnival figures underwater, um, as well as the, the quality of the work was amazing. So yes, we were regenerating reefs by the, mm -hmm. the submersion of those figures, but as a carnival baby, it was <laughs> wonderful to see um, and to take photos next to, etc. So that was that, that's just fantastic. But Amanda, if I am to ask you, has the Caribbean almost shot itself in the foot? Because when we think Caribbean, quite often we don't think sustainable um, tourism. Have we had so much success with sun, sea, and sand that your work is more difficult in promoting sustainable tourism in the Caribbean? That is such an excellent question. And certainly the three S's, you know, we've become very well known and that has been our market positioning. And it's not to say that there isn't value in the fact that our climate is an attraction for persons from colder regions, right, to escape during the, the winter periods. But Indeed, there needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance to ensure that our local communities are benefiting from tourism. We need to ensure that there are sustainable plans and strategy, strategies for environmental management. We need to ensure we are able to regenerate and preserve the resources that form the foundation of the tourism um, industry. So whenever someone comes to a destination, they need to have somewhere to stay, of course, food to eat and something to do. And looking at that sort of three tiered, um, the three tiered pillars, we are then able to redefine what it what Caribbean tourism means. And incidentally, coming out of COVID-19, we undertook the exercise of redefining the three S's of Caribbean tourism, sustainability, social inclusion and smart destinations. And smart destinations looks at the fact that we need to digitize, we need to train our persons to become more techno technologically savvy, and at the same time, pay very careful attention to climate and disaster resilience. And so this conference, which is you know, the premier regional dialogue that brings together ministers, directors of tourism, tourism professionals, the media, the academic community, and our international development partners is an opportunity to ventilate the issues that impact the sustainability of, of tourism, to share best practices um, against the beautiful backdrop and best pra practice model that is Grenada and to identify solutions that work for us as a people and as a region. So I, in a, in a nutshell, I really hope this sort of answers the question of, you know, how are we managing the fact that we need to continue marketing and promoting our region, but also in the context of the value of our cultural, environmental resources and our people and how we can capitalize to ensure an equitable balance in the context of tourism benefits and development. Okay, excellent. Petro, it's time to pivot, is what Amanda is saying. Yes, we have been sun, sea, and sand from the time we got into the tourism business, late 60s, early 70s, emphasizing whether we're looking at cruise tourism or otherwise. It's time to pivot. How has the GTA, and I would imagine in collaboration with other governmental agencies, attempted to bring our people along? Because one of the P's of sustainability Sustainable development, uh, sustainable tourism is people. Um, how have we worked to bring people along?
along in recognizing the importance of a sustainable tourism product. Well, again, that's where I started because it's very easy to be one of the sunset and sea destinations, <laughs> absolutely. But I think that where we, we did an audit and sat and said, okay, well, where is it that we can have competitive advantage? Where is it that we can actually look at our socio-cultural identity and ensure that we have a developmental program for our people? I think that there is a dichotomy when it comes to tourism in terms of there are lots of positives, but also there are lots of negatives. And I think that we, as responsible stewards, need to ensure that we mitigate the negatives and um, capitalize on the positives. So therefore, that has been through um, the establishment of policy guidelines, that's been through the establishment of small grants for um, the small businesses, cottage industries, etc. One of the things that we do at the GTA is certainly lead by example. So, for example, we have a no plastics policy in the office. We also engage in volunteerism activities, which is whether it's cleaning up the beach or going to teach kids at children's homes to kite fly or reading to old people, etc. I think that what we're trying to do is inculcate a sense of responsibility into our, um, you know, team members right. and ensure that then through outreach, community outreach, that we appeal to the broader civic community. In terms of um, the people element, there are so many um, grant opportunities that are available, and certainly one of the things that GTA does is looks and finds where those grants are and helps in terms of creating responses to the grant so that there can be funding for the small businesses. And again, there's a mentorship program where anyone can outreach to us and get guidance in terms of where the industry is going. So one of the things that we are trying to do, and everything takes time, you know, is forge a stronger sense of collaboration. Because if you look at what's going on, there are several um, entities, organizations that are in silos and doing the same thing. Yes, right. Whereas if we all combined our resources, the noise that we would create would be so much louder and the impact would be a lot more um, progressive. So again, everything takes time. We have a strategic plan, um, which includes all those elements. And again, it's one step at a time. But I believe that we have a very committed industry, both in terms of the private sector stakeholders, both in terms of the policy makers and um, the uh, also um, um, the union, um, how do you call it, the um, national entities mm -hmm. that manage tourism as well. Right. Um, either of you can respond, Curly or, or yourself, Petro. How do we get our communities to recognize the products that they have. We live with it, we know it, it's us. How do we recognize its value? How do we change the mindset, one, to protect, two, to monetize? If I'm to give an example, let's look, and we've had good success, the turtle watching in Levera. Mm -hmm. um, good community sustainable tourism initiative. How do we promote that? And how do we get other communities to recognize things that might be unique to their area, they can leverage both for local support and when the visitors come, they join the Grenadians in supporting those initiatives. We actually launched a volunteerism program back in 2022 where we brought together a caucus of all the volunteerism activities that visitors could do as well as locals um, on when they come into Grenada. I think um, certainly from a volunteerism perspective, what we were trying to do is ensure that we has had a hands-out approach, sorry, a hands-up approach rather than a hands-out. So we don't want to be, oh, well, we're trying to get money for this or we're having that sort of begging mentality. What we wanted to do, again, was to look at it from a developmental perspective where, again, you can get visitors who are involved in specific areas of, um, of let's say, knowledge mm -hmm. 
overseas, when they come here, that then they would give back of their time and they would engage in training of the local population. But as I said, there are loads, we, we can't look at it from a one-sided perspective because there are several gold practices that are here in Grenada as well that we can also share with communities who are coming in and we have also, um, you know, striven to actually focus on that. Right. We recognize that we can't be all things to all men. Mm -hmm. So if we are to think in terms of our sustainable tourism product, what are two or three things that jumps out that we believe we should build upon so that that can be signature Grenada in the medium term? I don't know, Curl, if you want to take that one. I think you mentioned a couple of things, but just in terms of where should we go? All right. Um, before I go into the couple of the signature mm -hmm. things that we ought to look at so that we can move, I think it's important for us at this point um, when we're talking about the people and how we influence is to talk about the fact that we need to really start with the youngsters. Mm -hmm. And the Tourism Authority has taken the lead when it comes to, we actually created a Tourism and Me program, and that program was in conjunction with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Tourism. So we would have launched that program in 2018 mm -hmm. for the, the grade five, and sixes, right. right? And that is, forms part of the social studies program, mm -hmm. right? And so what it does, it a part of that program, apart from them getting their becoming tourism ambassadors and getting pinned and doing the little homework and getting their little tests done, um, what it does too is in to show them that, you know, they too form part of what is happening next, right? Um, they get more exposure when it comes to the field trips and the side visits and those things they take back home and they bring back to community. Mommy, Daddy, did you know, right? I mean, a lot of the kids in the outer parishes, you know, because everything is centered within that parish, you know, they barely leave home to have an idea of what Fort George looks like, what Grand Anne's Beach looks like. And so those things now, you know, if they are taking it back home to teach the parents, right? I see that now we have, um, we can see that the whole system is starting to change, right? With the little ones and you can see them growing up. I think if I'm just to interrupt you here, you seem to be mentioning that Grenadians ought to have the ability to have an intelligent conversation about Grenada. Absolutely. The visitors will Google <laughs> and they have their facts and they meet a Grenadian and start a conversation mm -hmm. and then realize, wait a second, um, this youngster probably may not be as knowledgeable or what he's communicating is not as accurate mm -hmm. as we know it to be. Uh, and that seems to be the thrust, which is critically important for us as nationals, but certainly in terms of developing that trust thrust and trust yeah. as we engage with our visitors mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. right so you know um, at the end of the the day you know we're talking about balance we're talking about sustainability we talk people mm -hmm. um, and our our the future is really in our the hands of the of the youngsters that are really coming up and so we will continue to have that vested interest in the schools and continue the programs that we're having um, when it comes to the different things that we need to zero in on and sure that we know about of course, you know, we need to ensure that apart from understanding that we have the the, the rum distillery and the importance of the water wheel, um, you know, River and Twine Rum Distillery is what I'm talking about here. Um, the fact that, you know, we have a Belmont estate and how that really inculcates everything. You actually see it at work. Right. Um, the mere fact that you have festivals, be it, it is the regattas, that you want more involvement in it. You want to be able to hand down those traditions, see people actually involved in the, in the boat building. You want to be able to see the youngsters in Caracol learning to play the the, 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 the exactly the violin band, and, the, band, right? and all the different various string instruments mm -hmm. and you actually see that happening now they're right. in the schools there's summer programs and you actually see the little ones forming part of who they're going to be in the future right. so I think we're definitely on the on the right path mm -hmm. so you mentioned the, uh, the culinary um, so let me just do a drop for Coco because okay. one of the <laughs> things that I am pleased with is the number of dark chocolates that are now on, on the market as well as the infusion of other spices in those products. I'm not going to mention any brands, right? But, but that actually, I think, has become a signature product of Grenada, which is us. And we can see from tree to bar. Absolutely. I think that is one of the main um, sustainable best practices, I would say, that we have in the Caribbean region. Because not only do we have the Grenada 
cocoa, um, um, the cocoa Association. But that cocoa Association over the years has expanded. You know, we have hundreds of farmers. Um, and like you have indicated, which you rightly said, it really and truly has synthesized over the years. And look at where we are now. Mm -hmm. What chocolate capital of the Eastern Caribbean? Maybe we could say that. Right. Um, but <laughs> we get a lot of fighting about it. But I think <laughs> at the end of the day, we have taken that moniker and we're going to go with it. Run because with it. when you've got 12% of the world's finest cocoa, nobody's going to beat that. And you know? then we could always leverage back to per capita. We only absolutely. 133 square miles. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But, but then we've also had the um, chocolate festival, which continues. And it's so fascinating that irrespective of where we go around the world, people are like, oh my gosh, I really want to come for the chocolate festival. And I think what was interesting is that we always want to be in a stage of evolution, you know? Mm -hmm. So last year, we actually changed it so that it was the chocolate and rum um, festival because again rum was one of those things that we've got a phenomenal offering mm -hmm. and yet so many so few people knew about it right. so again we look at everything that we're doing diving festival for example that also evolved so that we changed it into the dive and conservation festival I mean Carl was talking about um, the um, products that we have and you look at Karakou for example the cradle of culture mm -hmm. and we have the string band and um, the, the um, maroon festival we have the Saraka as well oh, and when I tell so people nice. about these things they're like fascinated that in a day and age where people are greedy almost that people will open up their doors and share what little they have and I think that those are the stories that we need to continue to tell because at the end of the day it speaks to the heart of who we are as a people right. and again that's the subliminal underpinning of the fact that it's a very safe and welcoming community and we ask people all the time why do you come back to Grenada it's not about a hotel it's not about the food that they ate. you know it's not about the beach it really starts and ends with the people of Grenada right. we've also invested in training of the um, tourism workers and at the end of the day what it is is really just reskinning what is comes naturally to the Grenadian people warm kind friendly you know I I'm often challenged by this every visitor to Grenada mentions the people warm friendly kind giving and yet still in Grenada we say we have a problem with customer service. It's almost that like we want to give our kindness for free, but when we paid, we're not as good as <laughs> that. <laughs> So, I like that. So the, the, the question is, how do we risk it? How do we get individuals to recognize that even in the paid environment, because we are in a service industry, so whether you work in a hotel, a restaurant, at a store, it's all service. And how do we have that Grenadianism in terms of our attitude, our given warm, open selves at work, as we will when they meet us within community? It's quite interesting because rather than talking about tourists, we talk about visitors we talk about our guest and that gives you a totally different interaction because if you're your if you're a guest coming into my home I treat you with the greatest of grace don't I but I think that certainly from the training perspective what we've done as well is trained the supervisors and the management staff because it's one thing that you are one of the team um, colleagues and you go and you're very motivated and you're very happy oh my god I did the pure Grenada excellence championship training right. and then you go back and then you have somebody who is not giving you the right guidance the right direction and culture so, is powerful powerful right. so therefore having the expansion to include now the supervisors and the managers and them understanding their responsibility not only to the business but you have to now say this is a responsibility to your country you know and this is not just about for the visitor this is about for your Grenadian Absolutely. friend and colleague so it's now hospitality mm -hmm. and that's what we have to continue reinforcing give of your best shine what does Eddie Frederick always say he always says self always starts with self-awareness if mm -hmm. it means that you understand where you are in the construct
product of everything, there's always, you could always, the only thing you can do is give your best, right? And I mean, you know, um, a primary example that we, you, we always share is the fact that if it meant that at home you were expecting a friend or a relative, how would you go about that? Right. What would you do to make your house pretty? Mm -hmm. What would you want to do to show them the best of Grenada? Right. And if you keep that in mind, I think everything else goes well. And that collective approach is the story you would have heard of the janitor at NASA. And they ask, what do you do? He said, I'm trying to get a shuttle to the moon. <laughs> Even though he was a janitor. Absolutely. Because it was that collaborative approach and it's that led to that success. And that old saying, tourism is everyone's is business. business. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we don't limit it to tourism is everybody's business. Hospitality is everybody's business. Agreed and well said. Viewers, we're talking tourism. We're talking sustainable tourism. We're going to take our first break. But when we come back, we're going to zero in on the context and contents of the Tourism Sustainability Conference coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll be right back. affordable and customer friendly pharmacy look no further than hills and valley pharmacy the nation's leading healthcare products and services provider we are committed to serving you at convenient locations find an extensive and affordable selection of prescription and over-the-counter drugs and medical supplies at church street hillsborough Karaku, jubilee street grenville st andrew near the bus terminal and halifax and grenville street st george our committed team is always available to offer valuable assistance for managing your health and wellness. Discover the additional benefits of our wholesale distribution on Halifax Street and our Medgar Center on Grenville Street, where we provide in-house physiotherapy, massage therapy, doctor consultations, and eye care services. Our commitment is to satisfy all your healthcare needs, including competitive prices, loyalty rewards, and special discounts for seniors. Contact us at 435-6904 and WhatsApp 535-4734. Choose Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Remember, your health is our business. Boyo, they got fly with kite now. The wind picking up. I'm coming, I'm coming. Kaim, what are you doing? Fly my kite. Yeah, but not here. You can't fly kite near power lines, boy. Why not? The wind good. Because mommy say kite treads conduct electricity. Yeah, kite. It's right. If your kite gets stuck in power lines, it can cause power outages, or even worse, it can get shot. Come, they're going to fly them in the pasture. Yeah, that makes sense. Grenland, energizing our Grenada. But when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never leave. Come on, take my hands, we've got everything we need. Because you can look to me whenever you're in need. Just call on me and I'll be on my way. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Mark your calendars, football fanatics. The GFA is turning 100 this year, and we're ready to celebrate. It's GFA's Legends Weekend, a three-day extravaganza. Kicking off on Friday, May 3rd, and running all the way till Sunday, May 5th. Witness history in the making. The Caribbean taking on the world in a clash of legendary international footballers. On Sunday, May 5th, at the electrifying Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Get ready to roar with the crowd as iconic legends like Emmanuel Adebayo, 
Mayor, El Hajj Diouf, Alex Song, Michael Essien, Luis El Matador Hernandez, Shaka Hislop, Asamoa Gayan, Ricardo B.B. Gardner, Russell Latapi, Shallery Joseph, Jason Roberts, Dexter Dabs, and a whole host of superstars light up the pitch. From breathtaking goals to unforgettable memories, GFA's Legends Weekend promises an epic celebration of football you won't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled on GFA's social media for the full squad reveal. GFA's Legend Weekend. Be there. and listeners we're talking sustainable tourism and we're gonna just shift gears a little bit and zero in on the sustainable tourism conference which is scheduled to start next monday april 22nd amanda from the cto's of our perspective what are some of the things you hope to accomplish in the 2024 conference so the 2024 conference really is an opportunity to shed the light on the theme and we've spoken a lot about the P's that form really the basis for the sustainability of Caribbean tourism. And the theme invites us to consider what we as a people will leave as a legacy for future generations. So the five Ps include people, planet, prosperity, purpose, and partnership. And really, it allows us to look at in the context of people, how are we being inclusive and empowering our people to participate and benefit from sustainable tourism and, you know, I, I guess sustainable hospitality, as my colleague <laughs> Petra so articulately, um, so eloquently articulated. Um, the second pillar of planet as custodians of our fragile environmental resources. How are we engaging in conservation, again, to ensure future benefit and use? The, the, the third pillar looks at purpose, purpose-driven travel experiences. And Grenada has done such an excellent job in merging conservation and tourism in the context of the first underwater sculpture gallery um, in the world. And of course, the, the fifth P looks at partnerships and the importance of public, private, and community partnerships to ensure, again, an equitable balance to managing and developing tourism in the region. So I think I touched on everything. People, <laughs> planet, but there profits, was the prosperity. prosperity. There was I the think prosperity I missed prosperity. There. Right. Yes. Along with the purpose and, 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 and the partnership. Right, and, and that speaks to really inclusive growth for all. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I will hand over to my colleagues here who can shed some light as well in the context of how we will ventilate the various topics under these five pillars for the sustainability of tourism in Grenada and the Caribbean by extension. Okay, thank you for, for that, Amanda. And Curl, before we delve into the actual program of the conference, the conference launches on April 22nd, which is Earth Day. Um, planet is one of the pillars, is one of the Ps. So what, share with us what is happening in Grenada. Let's start there, and then we'll zero in on the actual conference. But what is taking place, to the best of your knowledge, yes. in Grenada to celebrate Earth Day? All right, but before I tell you some of the things that are happening on Earth Day, I, I want to share that in 1970, the first picture of the planet Earth was taken from outer space. Mm -hmm. And based on what that based on that picture, they decided that this planet is worth saving. 
And so Earth Day began because of that one picture. Okay. And I think when we look at one of the five Ps, you know, planets, the fact that we're all staying here, um, I think it is important that people do more, understand more, where do I fit in? And so, you know, I mean, you know, from the tourism authority perspective, being able to engage and advocate and having understanding of what is happening on the ground, um, you have a lot of people, be it as private sector, the NGOs, civil society, the statutory bodies are actually doing their part. Even the schools, you know, um, SGU has an uh, environmental club, TAMTC has an environmental club, um, and for example, you have um, Grenada Solid Waste Authority, they're getting ready to sign an MOU with GHT and other, GHTA and other hotels on the collection of plastic bottles. Right. That's significant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, there's going to be a launch also on that day, so it's going to happen on Earth Day. Mm -hmm. Also on Earth Day is going to be the Grenada Fund for Conservation. They're actually getting ready to launch the mangroves in Woburn, the interpretation center. That also showcases what we are be doing. Other than that, we have the dive community you have aquanauts getting ready not only to do the lionfish hunting but also to do reef um, restoration they're also getting to do they're also going out also to collect um, any undesirable things that are on the reef right. uh, you know so you have the, the schools being involved um, you have G3 Grenade Specto Spio um, you have um, the, the 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 mission the the mission of, the, oh, I can't remember the other, the other group right now, but, but it's an international organization um, that deals with the earth and is a Grenada chapter. So they are also involved. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a number of people across the board really looking and see how could we engage schools, be it we're doing beach cleanups, reef cleanups, speaking to the, to the kids. Um, we also have um, an NGO called uh, 195 365 that's leading on a global social media campaign whereby it's all about making a change and so far I think they have two um, they have two submissions one from Ghana one from India and you have about 90 other commitments from different commune NGOs from all the world okay. that really and truly this planet is important how are we making that difference what are we going to do about it we need to have a voice and we need to be out there mm -hmm. you know I mean up to this morning I was looking at um, G Cruz is out there as well you know getting ready they're out in the schools the schools getting the, the kids are getting ready to do would put their jingles together for how do we conserve water. Right. So there's a number of things that are happening on Earth Day. It's also going to be the opening day for the um, the Sustainable Tourism Conference, and of course everything is really coming together quite nicely. Okay, excellent. And just you know, it's important. And uh, Petra introduced the term the small island developing states. Um, we're small. Wait. With melting snow caps, we're going to lose part of our 133 square miles. We don't have, and we don't have much to lose. Um, and it is important that we do our part. We may not be necessarily the biggest sinner in the world, but as little as we can do, we do. And our consciousness is important as a people in protecting our environment for our own sustainable development. You mentioned the um, bleaching of the reefs. Um, what can we do? Is it just a straight case of the increase in temperatures that has caused the bleaching of the reefs? Um, or is, is, is there a deliberate act that we can do. I know for the sculpture park, we, we put down the, the monuments in order to bring back, you know, life to the reef. What can we do to protect that? And this is very personal because I'm a diver. So, so I'm a diver too. Right, so, yes. So it, it, it I always really say if big. everybody learned to dive, they would learn to appreciate the oceans and they would take better care of it. I totally agree. I totally Simple. Agree. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, is there anything that, that we can do? Um, you know, really and truly not directly mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you know, um, the current bleaching is primarily because the, the water is getting warmer. Wow, right. You know, there are other factors that trickle into the quality of the ecosystem, the marine ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the example, for the exam, for the same thing, um, you have, you know, too much carbon dioxide in the water as right. well. You have siltation coming off the rivers that also rest in the water that also did, that is detrimental to the fish. Right. You know, and of course you have things like, you know, overfishing and all of the other 
other things that are happening that we, we hope and pray that you know doesn't happen um, but certainly the warming of the sea is the, is the most critical issue at hand and of course in terms of how we're dealing with land management coastal support coastal erosion how do we look at being innovative um, and of course you know in terms of that originality in looking at the tourism product but also in terms of cherishing who we are as a nation as a tropical ecotourism and that challenge for a coastal management agency maybe you know in collaboration with a number of governmental agencies becomes more and more important um, whether we're looking at the sea but if we're looking at our mangroves mm -hmm. for example how do we protect those because it has um, effects long-lasting effects spawning of the fish etc so it's not just the presence of the mangroves but our own sustainable use practices. of it the protection of it for our own well-being but I guess that's what we've been talking about in terms of the best practices that take place in Grenada as well because you've got the GARP um, Grand Anne's artificial reef project which is um, the brainchild of Phil Say and again it's a very simple proposition where they put down some cement blocks and again it's about the rejuvenation and regeneration of the eco um, system in, in and the biodiversity of the marine life then you've got the bio rocks project in Karaku we also have the mangrove restoration project and we've seen that since the hurricane they're almost about to have the fourth mangrove come back into play and this is one of the things that we're also trying to highlight because a lot of people think oh well if it's sustainable then you can't make money from it you know but through that mangrove regeneration project they're actually going to be um, training rangers right. to run tours and this opens up a brilliant opportunity for us to have another segment mm -hmm. of tourism which is then in terms of the wildlife and bird watching etc right. so I think that we have to share these stories and show the positive results of some of these initiatives so that more people will embrace them and ultimately one of the things that we have to do as a government um, and, and certainly as the tourism office is that we have to ensure that we have policies that continue to protect um, these um, precious resources and exposure is so important that mangrove off of Harvey Vale, mm -hmm. right? It's an amazing site. Um, you got to see oyster beds. the oyster beds. Yes. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. Yes. Um, so the protection of, but as just as diving, you need to first be exposed to see the beauty, mm -hmm. recognize the importance, That's and right. then you can join hands in the protection and ensuring that it's mm -hmm. sustainable. And I think one of the things that we also have to ensure that we do is monitor, and if there is someone who is contravening the regulations mm -hmm. ensure that they are penalized so that they understand that there are consequences to their actions right. and that we're serious about it mm -hmm. okay excellent and, and we can we, we can do the monitoring so yes there will be rangers <laughs> paid but you know hospitality is everybody's business Absolutely. Right? And hence yes. we all have our part to play in that protection yeah um, so Petra let's zero into the actual conference mm -hmm. programmatically uh, what are some of the things that we can expect to unfold as the conference continues? I think the conference is going to be absolutely fantastic. We've spent a lot of time working with CTO to come up with something that we think will be very engaging, provocative. We really, do you know, like sometimes you do things and you walk away and it's so, okay, we've done that, right. but there are no real action takeaways. Mm -hmm. And we have challenged ourselves to ensure that at the end of it, we have an action plan which we can also pledge um, to adhere to. Okay. So we start off on Monday with um, the welcome ceremony and that is going to be um, opened by our esteemed Prime Minister, the Honourable De Deacon Mitchell and our um, Minister of Tourism, mm -hmm. um, the Honourable Adrian Thomas. We also have the Caraco String Band, the cultural train. They will be coming up for, well, they'll be coming down, down <laughs> from Karakou and they'll be joining us and um, there's a special little something that we have in their presentation that I think will warm the hearts of everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the feature
first speaker is Adam Stewart, who most people are aware is the executive chairman of Sandals Resorts International. And I think the great thing about Adam is that he is somebody who has walked the walk. And um, certainly when we look at 24 properties across the entire Caribbean and, you know, the employer of almost 20,000 people, he has a full understanding of the challenges that we face under the banner of those five P's that Amanda was talking about. And I think Sandals has really been committed to collaborating um, with the Grenada network of um, rural women rural producers in terms of trying to ensure that we have food security and that we really push the farm to table, um, you know, um, um, focus. So they started off under the um, women who help others achieve that program and my darling Theresa Marishaw has done an incredible job and that um, they started off I think with about 60 women and it's now grown so much that they have now introduced youth and men into the program because you know they're doing such a well a, a, a brilliant job so it's not only about the food production and that food safety but it's also about women empowerment and whereas sandals has also given them two greenhouses and fertilizers and seeds etc they've also trained them in accounting in marketing in and crisis management critically important for what success. did your mother say you give someone a fish to eat you feed them for a day teach them to fish you feed them for a lifetime Correct. and I think that that is one of the mottos that we need to ensure is also integrated into everything that we're doing mm -hmm. um, that we leave our people better off right. and um, so I, it's really um, going to be a very interesting um, feature address from um, Adam because I know that he will be touching on all five of those right. pillars and then we have um, you know some significant significant um multinational corporations who are going to be there as well. We've got Louise Twinning, Dr. Louise Twinning Ward from World Bank. We've got the UNDP, um, you know, quite a lot of the policy makers, mm -hmm. because again, we can come up with every single initiative, um, but then you need to ensure that they're regulated, that they're protected, etc. And we also have the Destination Grenada panel, which I will be moderating, and we have again Phil Say who is going to be talking about the mangrove and the evolution of um, the protection and preservation of, of, of our um, you know precious resources we've got Dr. Angus Friday who is himself a luminary especially when it comes to the blue economy we have Tiffany Gear, who is one of the persons who has helped us with the dive and conservation festival and we have my dear Dr. Guido Marcel who is himself a botanist and a chemist um, and he has wonderful stories his narrative is so fascinating he can tell you everything about the banana plant whether or not it's about <laughs> the eating of it or the holistic um, you know um, the, the holistic um, elements of it or the chemistry of it or the history of it how can and we the role how can we bottle <laughs> Dr. Guido Massa how, do, how can we bottle to him. Because he is an amazing Grenadian, extremely knowledgeable. Phenomenal. And the question and so is personable. How can we, precisely. And we need to replicate. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, Dr. Marcel, because it, we can't lose that no. knowledge. Oh, my goodness. And, and you know, I can remember we were up at Granatang one day and I had a, a, a cut on my um, hand, um, you know, grazing against something. And he takes the banana leaf and he wipes it. He's like, Petra that will heal it. I was like, okay, so no Dettol and, <laughs> you know, Mercure comb or right. anything like that. So, again, his storytelling is so compelling mm -hmm. that for youngsters who are coming along and instead of sitting down in a classroom where it's like, oh, you know, this is all too grandiose for my brain, for him to be able to share the knowledge that he has in such a relevant way um, can surely ensure that they too 
will become um, captivated and signed up to playing their part as well. So, uh, sorry, I think that we were trying to go through um, some of the other speakers that we have. There we have um, the Honourable Kenneth Bryan, who is the chairperson of the CTO. We have the Wendy um, McDonnell, who is the regional vice president of government relations with um, Royal Caribbean Group. And Royal Caribbean has come on as a sponsor, and they will actually be doing a tour into onto their ship, which is Explorer of the Seas, which is going to be in um, at the cruise terminal on the Wednesday. And they will also do a study tour where they look at the energy efficiency initiatives on board the ship and share that with a group of students as well as um, some of the persons who are attending the conference. And it's important that the cruise industry join in this philosophy of sustainable tourism, Absolutely. not just for the visitors, but sometimes we accuse them of not necessarily having best practices Absolutely. Um, in, in you know, the oceans and, and, and the like. So seeing Royal Caribbean as a partner is important. Yes, absolutely. We also have Richard Pruitt, who is the senior vice president um, for Carnival PLC as well. Mm -hmm. And he will also be coming and talking about what they're doing in terms of sustainability practices. And I think what's good with a lot of these speakers is that they want to get out and around and see the real Grenada after the conference. So we're going to be taking him up to Perseverance. We're going to be um, help. He's going to be looking at some of the waste management systems that we have on the ground and seeing what we can do in terms of collaborations. So again, what we want to ensure is that the conference just doesn't reach the 200 plus people who are sitting in that room at Radisson, but certainly that we can share the information so that not only is it educational, right. but certainly that there's a degree of commitment from everyone to sign up and really um, ensure that we have the environmental preservation and um, commitment to preserving the future for future generations. Let me just ask you to zero in, and you can use the various speakers because we do have the website up on screen. Um, you say it's not a checkbox in hosting this conference. They want to be, we want real action items coming out that can lead to the development of that sustainable tourism industry in Grenada and can be replicated across mm -hmm. the region, no doubt. What are some of those action items that you're hoping that we'll be able to get a good sound footing and launch from the conference? Well, we're not going to preempt that. We really want this to be an interactive um, everyone coming to the table and having their input. Okay. It's so, I think that sometimes we do ourselves a disservice by sharing what we want as the end result at the beginning, mm -hmm. because then people don't think as broadly outside the box as we would want them to be. But I think what we've done is really put together some amazing um, speakers who come from very diverse backgrounds, whether they're people who are in the education industry, whether they're coming from a multinational corporation, as I said, whether they're policy makers, whether they're persons who have their own investments in the industry, you know, um, and I think that having very different and diverse diverse perspectives will lead to a more robust and informed um, action plan. Excellent. And but I would sense. recommend that everyone goes to the website, which is CaribbeanSCC.com, and again, you can go through and see what the program is, who the speakers are, what's happening on each day, and also register yourself. So we've got some special rates for um, local locals who want to attend. They can either attend for one day or for two days, and included in the two-day sign-up is actually um, the access to attending a study tour. And we've got four study tours that we're going to be doing. Um, those four study tours, one of which is going to the Underwater Sculpture Park. Mm -hmm. We also have the... Um, we have the Granitan with the with um, Dr. Marcel. We're also doing tree planting as well. And I, I, I like hearing this. Post Hurricane Ivan, 
we weren't intentional mm -hmm. of replanting the rainforest. We weren't necessarily intentional of the rejuvenation of our nutmeg industry. So we moved from second largest exporter of nutmegs in the world to no longer the second largest exporter of mm -hmm. nutmegs in the world. I, I leave it like that. Our quality remains quality. Um, and uh, it is important for us to begin because it's never too late to start. So, you know, just share some of those hands-on things that will be part of the conference. Um, you know, you, you started on it, so what are some of the hands-on things? When we leave the Radisson, where are they going? Where can we go? What are we doing? Okay, well, Petra, my kind of mentions. Yeah. Here <laughs> we have it. So, yeah. We've so, got... So, you want to go? Okay. So, um, the, one of the um, so study tours. Here we are. So, we're going to be doing the underwater sculpture park and the Grand Ass Artificial Reef Tour. That's going to take us a couple hours because we want to be able to immerse people in the coral restoration that's happening at, at on Grand Ass Beach itself. Uh, be, they can snorkel as well. Um, and if it means that we have days going to have, they, get, they also have the opportunity to graft, to plant the coral. Um, then, of course, that takes them up to the underwater water sculpture park and there they'll have an amazing they can either um, dive or they can snorkel again and of course they're gonna see the nutmeg princess they're going to see the jab jab and the veco and the shorty they're also gonna see the leatherback turtle so they're gonna have a lot of things that's going to keep them really really busy for lots of stories coming from there um, then of course we have the granitang um, nature tour and of course Petra spoke about the fact that dr. Marcel is going to be our lead front central um, tour our guide on that day and then that's going to be followed by um, tree planting um, also Margaret. closer closer to 1910 um, so we're going to go off the road a little bit and we're going to be planting some spice trees and um, some other trees as well in conjunction with the forestry department right, right? actually the forestry department is also going to be doing some stuff also for Earth Day um, and in their initiative and in, in their space but of course people we must ensure that they visit they see the note look they they meet um, our Mona monkey right right um, the only one you're gonna find in the Eastern Caribbean Correct. and then of course there is the Rasta roots expedition so we're taking them um, all the way up to like Bailey Falls the Bailey Falls and they can do a number of things they can do the farm stories they could also do the actual falls themselves mm -hmm. so they can get wet they can go through the rivers hopefully they find a little crayfish but the fact is we want them to be immersed in who we are the ecosystems and that's why we were very intentional with the fact that yes you get our biodiversity on land but we're also exposing you to the, to the underwater landscapes as well and okay oh, 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 oh the breadfruit okay that's gonna be <laughs> part of the whole taste the food well let me tell you something I hope we have at least three delight. more showers of rain so the breadfruit can bear right? <laughs> All right, um, and this all seems just extremely exciting. I mean, there's an option for what I'm seeing as well in yeah. terms of the plantation cocoa We've got pot. Michael Jessamy and Trisha mm -hmm. Simon, they're going to be doing the plantation and cocoa pod botanicals. So again, talking about the history of um, the spices and the cocoa, and then Trisha will show how it's then made into various byproducts as well, which can be used for cosmetics and right. um, you know beauty, beauty products. Mm -hmm. And then Chef Joachim, who, as we know, is our vegan chef. He is also going to be, be, be preparing some idle foods. And the Grenada Agro um, Tourism Group is actually doing really great things. For example, they've started producing these um, juices, local juices, which they're selling through to the local hotels and restaurants as well. And at the convention center, we will also have them doing some tastings. Okay. Yeah, so we're just trying to bring as much of the sustainable products to life at the actual convention as well. Just to, um, just to add to what Petra is saying, these are the actual study tours because we know we have a really tight program, right. but we're also offering the post post um, tours to go up to go up to Karakou, okay. right? And you know that that is Maroon and String Band weekend, right. right? So those people who are actually leaving on Saturday or on Sunday, they may be able to take in a little bit of what's happening on Saturday and maybe get some food and whatnot. I think we need to have some flight cancellations so they can only go <laughs> <laughs> Some rail delay. They're going to get it out. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Um, if you if you may, ladies, let's just take a break, and when we come back, we'll start with some wrap-up comments. But we'll take a break, and we'll come back to conclude this conversation, read the conference, and some of the sustainable products that we have in Grenada that we certainly want to highlight to you Grenadians to continue to support. Grenada 50th Independence, the Royal Grenada Police Force Band presents the second annual Mother's Night Out. Mother's Night Out, the concerts all going down on Sunday, May 12th from 5 p.m. at the Grenada Trade Center. Featuring live from TNT, it's crazy. It's time to come, America will have a black president. John King. Many more June Lodge. Together with the Hitman Inspector, Valine Ned, Samantha Dixon, Alex Philip, Shane, Innocent, General PP, Kareem, Alexis, Ron Barry, the African Man, and much more. Dress code elegance. It's Mother's Night Out, the Grenada Trade Center, from 5 p.m. on Sunday, May 12. Lots of giveaways and prizes to be won. Champagne and roses on entry. You don't want to miss this amazing experience for mothers. Your tickets only $70 and are available from Kittens Pharmacy in Grand Dance and Grenville, Grenadian Optical, The Police Band House, Police Canteen. Make this a date for mothers. On Saturday, May 4, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to $5,000 cash and bingo. Interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register. It's the Maggie King of the Grill Competition at Progress Park St. Andrew. Gates open from 12 noon. Bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details. Maggie King of the Grill is made possible by Bryden and Miners, Hunts, the official barbecue sauce of King of the Grill, Rubis, Get Rubis, Get Going, Independence Agencies, Agents for Swiss Products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottle and Company Limited, and Waggy T Rental and Sounds. Whatever you've been putting off, do it today with a loan of up to $20,000 from Cost Ready Cash. No collateral needed, flexible payment terms, and fast approval. All you need is your ID, proof of address, job letter, pay slip, and two references. Visit your nearest Cost Ready Cash location today or apply online at Cost.com. Why wait? Get it done today at Cost Ready Cash. We are ready when you are. Conditions apply. Conditions apply. Kiriko Maroon and String Band Music Festival 2024, April 26 to the 28th. Coming together to preserve and showcase our culture is who we are. Friday the 26th, Salmont at the Chapel. Early morning libation, 3 p.m. Saraka. 7 p.m. the official opening ceremony and cultural evening. Saturday from 10 a.m. Here's Morrow Square. It's Strings in the City. Then at 8 p.m. we move to the Botanical Gardens for cultural explosion with local and regional performances featuring Touch the Band. Admission $60. Then on Sunday, it's the grand finale, Paradise Beach. From 12 noon, musical entertainment. And from 4 p.m., Paradise Beach Friends. Cultural entertainment and live music. Admission $20. Come along to dance the quadrille and big drum on Paradise Beach every Sunday after the launch until the festival ends. Kiriko Maroon and String Band Music Festival 2024, April 26 to the 28th.
Welcome back, viewers and listeners. We're speaking sustainable tourism, and of course, we're focusing on the 2024 Sustainable Tourism Conference being hosted in Grenada, April 22nd through 24th. Um, and um, we are closing off, and I'm going to deliberately do some uh, conference things and go to Amanda, and then I'm going to challenge you guys at a couple of things at Grenada in terms of sustainable um the sustainable tourism industry. But how do we, post-conference, capture some of the information that will be revealed at conference? And how do we allow the information shared at conference to reach the wider Grenadian public? Now, everyone can't go to the Radisson. Um, everyone can't go on that tour by Dr. Guido Marcel. What plans are there to ensure that a wider group of the population gets the information. One thing that we hadn't mentioned is that we've got 30 members of the media who are coming from across the, um, mainly North America and the UK, as well as in the Caribbean. So obviously the whole point is for them to write copious number of articles and share them with their audience. But amongst ourselves as well, we will be curating articles which share exactly what the outcomes of each of the sessions has been, which will then be on um, um, the Pure Grenada website. Mm -hmm. okay. And to just to add to what Petra's saying there, um, we're also going to be having some students at the conference, and they're going to be doing some creative pieces that will end up in the public domain, okay. in the newspapers and whatnot, about their experience and what their thoughts are as it relates to sustainability. Okay. Amanda, I'm coming to you. As you think Tourism Sustainability Conference 2024, what are some of the things that you're excited about? You just want to jump in and you wish the conference was starting tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, so you can be a part of it. Well, one thing that Curl and Petra forgot to mention was the social events. And they are an opportunity for the world that is coming to Grenada to experience the culture, the cuisine. Um, in addition to the study tours, there are three main social events, and that includes um, the Grenada, the host country, destination um, host reception, actually, then I think that will be held at Silver Sands. We have the media breakfast press conference, and that is hosted by local partner, the newest um, resort in Grenada, uh, Six Senses, and they, they've also come on board. And then there is the cultural extravaganza that is, which will be held at the Spice and Craft Market. And the event culminates with the Sustainable Tourism Awards, the Caribbean Sustainable Tourism Awards, where we reward and recognize sustainability champions. And I think Grenada the Grenada Tourism Authority will also have a surprise in terms of perhaps recognizing sustainable tourism pioneers in the destination, but that event will be held at the iconic Annandale Waterfalls, where it will be transformed. And, you know, having had the opportunity to come to Grenada to look at the various sites, to look at the products and the elements that will comprise the three exciting days where persons will, you know, interact with experts, participate in the panel discussions, certainly have an opportunity to explore Destination Grenada through the post-conference tours and the study tours, but most importantly, the opportunities for knowledge exchanges, um, the sharing of best practices, and the very social events, we can, I think, set a, a new path where we are more aware of what our neighbors are doing. And that can inspire everyone, I think, to be more conscious, more conscious of how we treat with people how we address um, conservation of our very fragile planetary and, and natural resources, um, the attention that is given to inclusive growth when we think of prosperity.
and really spreading the tourism dollar, um, ensuring that tourism offers more purposeful and meaningful engagements and strengthening public, private, and community partnerships. So again, Grenada is the perfect setting. We are so thrilled that the government of Grenada through the Grenada Tourism Authority signed on to host this conference, this very important regional conference at such a critical time when we face various risks related to the climate, to waste reduction, to energy, to the digital divide. So it's an opportunity to come together, um, increase our own knowledge, right? And um, I think gain and enhance will be critical to the future of Caribbean tourism. If I'm to ask you, Amanda, if I am a practitioner in Barbados, in St. Vincent, which was the last face-to-face -face host in, in, in 2019, um, in Anguilla, what are some of the things I should look forward to in attending this conference? certainly the opportunity to visit Grenada. Um, we want to promote vacations in the Caribbean, and we're telling uh, all our delegates to make it a staycation. Come to the conference, visit Grenada, and explore the destination and all that it has to offer. Then hear from experts. Petra would have outlined the high level and diverse speakers across, you know, climate science, culture and heritage, agrotourism, um, and the various other aspects, cruise, our cruise partners, our airline partners, Virgin Atlantic. Um, the Prosperity Panel will be a donor's showcase where we will hear from the various development banks and financing institutions on how we can finance sustainable tourism. We will hear from experts that are monetizing their tourism products, others who are merging tourism and conservation, and others who are capitalizing on their culture and heritage skills in terms of the designing and offering a unique and authentic tourism experience. So I think it will captivate all the five senses, you know, when we consider the five Ps. And it's, it's really a, a packed agenda, an exciting event. And we really look forward to the locals, you know, everyone in Grenada, Karaku, and Petit Martinique, making an effort to attend the event, to network, to participate in the craft showcase, um, the space for exhibitors that have sustainability solutions, and to meet your brothers and sisters from across the Caribbean. After all, we are one Caribbean, one people, and one very beautiful, but I would say fragile region. Let's come together, share with each other, learn from each other, and together chart a course forward for the future sustainability and growth of Caribbean tourism. And we know, of course, that it is one of the main social and economic drivers in terms of jobs, opportunities for entrepreneurship, um, generating sustainable alternative livelihoods. And we want to ensure that tourism, you know, re generates not, not just the uh, social and economic benefits, but is also conducive to the environment in the way it is planned, managed, packaged, and promoted. Excellent. Thank you. And that, I think, is a brilliant summary of what your expectations are and certainly what our expectations can be as participants and the benefits that can accrue 
um, certainly it is appreciative as well as to the diverse e expertise that would be there. So from your airline partners, to your cruise partners, to the financiers, to the, the, the practitioners and artisans that will be um, present. Um, uh, Curl, I'll give Petra the last word. So Curl, by way of um, closing comments, if you, you know, just what you would want to share, encourage, to highlight. Um, I, I certainly want to be able to encourage the Grenadian community um, about not only registering and being a part of this, but more so for us to be able to delve into the youth component of this program. Um, we actually have a com competition happening now with the primary and secondary schools, and we've actually started receiving some of those posters and craft um, from Caracu, Visby's Hills, Hillsboro, or Bishop's College. We also have something from the Special Education education school in Victoria and so you know we want this to be inclusive we want people to understand at the end of the day this is a balance a very 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 tight line that we're walking and it's about nature and it's about people and we as Grenadians we need to be able to remember those things that are so very important to us each other each other and the space in which we live and so when it comes to the tourism product what sh should we be looking at maintaining our backyards let's start there mm -hmm. right but of course when it comes to the things that we're pushing out in terms of the marketing and promotion we need to ensure that you know people come why what's unique our culture goes back to our people our beaches yes we're moving from sun sea sand to include all the other s's of sustainability but at the end of the day those are our rich assets and we need to keep them that way right. so look into our backyards keep those things in perspective love your country show ownership this investment in what we're doing and what we'll continue to do is not in vain okay excellent Petra and I would focus on the fact that we have such an outstanding group of experts who are going to be joining us and we are very well represented by the Grenadian contingent as well because we wanted to make sure that our voice and our perspective was heard. I think that We've recognized that tourism has a really important part to play, both in terms of social development, both in terms of economic development, both in terms of the improvement in tolerances of other people's cultures and differences. And at the end of the day, we fought hard to get this conference because we believe that the time is now. We believe that Grenada really is the essence of what sustainable tourism looks like. We know that we are not at the pinnacle. We know that we still have a good ways to go. But it's just to remind us that we're on the right path and we need to continue to be focused on integrating sustainability into every facet of whatever we do. And again, we would encourage anyone who is interested in conservation, in environmental preservation, in understanding the policy regulations, etc., that they should go out and register. CaribbeanSCC.com, and we look forward to having you join us and you playing your part as well for this very critical important conversation. Petra Roach, Curl Grant Hostialik, Amanda Charles. Ladies, thank you so very much for being with us this evening, for sharing on this very important issue. And I wish you all the very best for a successful conference. And to you, our viewing audience, um, yes, the five Ps of sustainable tourism, but what is critically important in the sharing is that it begins with us. If we take care of us, our people, our land, our land, Grenada, our land, the Caribbean, we will be better off as we promote sustainable tourism, as we promote good, strong livelihoods, as we promote our own well-being, as we go out to conquer the world. Support the tourism conference, support Grenada, support Grenadians. I look forward to being with you again in the not too distant future, but it has been an absolute pleasure hosting this evening. Take good care of yourselves, take good care of each other. God bless. Bye-bye.
Greetings from the beautiful Trialand state of Grenada, Karakou, and Pitimatic. My name is Adrian Thomas, Minister for Tourism, the Creative Economy, and Culture. I am warmly extending an invitation to you to attend the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Sustainable Tourism Conference, April 22nd to the 24th, 2020. It's also the 50th year of independence in Grenada, so you will be welcomed by those vibrant colours of our national flag, the red, the gold and the green. Join us for three days of interactive engagements as we explore Destination Grenada. We will be focusing on the five P's for a legacy of Caribbean tourism. People, planet, prosperity, purpose and partnership. Please join us there. Don't miss out on this wonderful opportunity for us to really help craft the vision for where Caribbean tourism goes in the next 50 years. We look forward to welcoming all our regional and international stakeholders, our member countries, sustainability champions worldwide. I look forward to seeing you at the Sustainable Tourism Conference in Grenada. I'll see you there. Register today, don't miss out. CaribbeanSDC.com.